Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now in yesterday's video we'll look at the potential for seeing a colder snap potentially uh, next week. We're still seeing a bit of a signal of a colder spell but it has backtracked slightly on the severity of cold. Still getting a colder air mass through but potentially not as wintry with um, that ridge not getting as far northwards. We are still seeing quite a consistent signal for blocking returning potentially into February and some of the models now are converging on the idea of a Scandinavian block towards the first third of February. It's not guaranteed by any means because it is, of course, in the longer term time frame, but it's something that is starting to come with a bit more consistency. So we're going to have to have a look at that in today's video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Also, do check out the channel membership, of course. The link is in the description as well. So if you do start with the GFS, you can see we do have high pressure over the top of the UK. But it's sort of a slack area of high pressure, light winds, a lot of trapped cloud. It's been quite a chilly day, only 3, 4, 5 degrees for many areas. Really quite cold, considering if you look at the upper air temperatures, it's not particularly cold at all. It's around average um, or above average this time of year. Now beyond that, we do start to see low pressure push in over the next few days. By the end of this week, we will be seeing low pressure return in the north, more wind and rain. Further southwards, we will st still see some... Um, areas of thicker cloud, potentially some patchy drizzly rain as the weather fronts do sink southwards, but we're still under higher pressure, so I don't think it's going to be too uh, too unsettled in the south, but definitely in the north seeing a return to more unsettled conditions. And you can see towards the weekend we start to see that bit of a northerly flow move in, um, some cold air does push southwards, but it's nowhere near as potent as we've even seen yesterday. Again, no, not resolved, it's still around six, seven days away, so it has... Uh, still got a bit of time to change, but definitely the north will be seeing the colder air, potentially not getting as far southwards. Now in the long term, as we head towards day 10, we do see again low pressure pushing in, in off the Atlantic. You can see there is blocking to the north. These blues and purples are being pushed southwards by this blocking over the pole. And you can see towards the UK, seeing cold polar maritime air masses move through. Quite chilly conditions. And you can see we get to a pattern where we actually stay in this cold air. And it's all because we do have a bit of a Scandinavian block going on. It's not a classic Scandinavian high from the GFS run, but it's cold enough to push the jet stream much further south. It's generally where this black line is. Keep us in the colder air with the milder sector staying to our south. With the low pressure around, could be pretty wintry as well with this. Again, you can see we're in the very cold air mass down to sort of minus 8 degrees at 850 HPA. Really cold, milder air, really nowhere close to the UK, so it would at least be a few days of cold weather. And this is a consistent signal we're seeing in the longer term with a Scandinavian block, whether it's going to turn into bitterly uh, cold easterly winds or whether it's just this sort of shifting the jet stream southwards is yet to be determined. And of course, a lot, of con lot can change, but at this stage, there is uh, quite a lot of consistency with some of the models in this. Now, if you have a look at the GEM run, see how that does compare. Again, you can see a lot of um, low pressure in the north, high pressure in the south, sort of moving through the different weather patterns. And we do see that brief bit of northwesterly to northerly wind uh, next week. Much colder air mass spreading southwards from the GEM run. So GEM still goes for quite a cold uh, sort of period, just not as quite uh, as much consistency as we saw yesterday with a lot of the models but it's still potentially there for a bit of a cold snap next week and then as we head towards day 10 again you can see this polar maritime air mass coming in from the northwest with mild air sat to our south and it was all because again we have a bit of higher pressure to our north again you see all those blues and uh, are not all smashed together um, as they are uh, at the moment, as you see there, a lot more spread out, more blocking, more high pressure pockets appearing, shifting that jet stream further south, as pushing that cold air towards the UK. Again, if we saw an organised block, we would likely to go very cold, um, but this would just go generally colder than average. Precipitation always means there is wintry potential whenever it's sort of in January, February time. Now, we'll also have a look at the Eastern OEF run, which is probably by far the most interesting run at day 10. Now, for some reason, it isn't updating on West Central. don't know if they have an issue there, but it's updated on Meteo Seal. Um, and if we do run through, again, very similar. Uh, you can see high pressure to the south, 
um, high pressure, uh, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. We see a bit of a northerly wind um, early next week for the first of February. But the interesting stuff happens towards day ten. High pressure ridging towards Scandinavia, and we are starting to go into an easterly wind. This would really be quite cold. Now, if we do look at that bit of a northerly flow next week, you can see about minus, the minus eight line gets through for some, minus six line for many. So, look, looking still quite chilly on the east of So, the GFS has backtracked, but perhaps not the GM and the east of But as we head towards day 10, wow, big cold pull to our east, higher pressure moving towards Scandinavia, and this would set up really quite cold, uh, sort of really bitterly cold, really, easterly flow. Now, by no means is it guaranteed. It could change. It's at day 10, but we are seeing this consistent signal. We've been seeing on both the GFS and the GM run for pockets of high pressure to build towards Scandinavia, Svalbard, north, generally over the North Pole. In those two scenarios, it's shifted the jet stream southwards, introducing cold air in from the north or northwest. But the East MWF run, which has been the most pessimistic run over the last few weeks, whenever we've looked at cold weather, has been the most pessimistic run. So I very much would say the East MWF run has had sort of a better hit rate in terms of what it's shown. So that's why I'm putting a, quite a bit of weight in this. I would say that this is very, very interesting charts um, showing a proper Scandinavian high potentially building with proper easterly winds. And again, we can show the anomaly charts from this eastern BF run and a classic high pressure towards uh, Iceland, Scandinavia, low pressure out into central eastern Europe moving towards the UK. Bitterly cold air would be flooding in if we did run this on another couple of days and we could start February very very cold but as we'll see with the ensembles there's support for it but there's not masses support from it not enough support where we can say this is very high chance of coming off now if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles we'll see what support it does have in the longer term now you can see if we go out to day seven there's quite a lot of consistency here north to northwesterly wind that's where we see the cold air mass come through Again, all depends on how far north as that high pressure goes and how much how much application we do see, how sharp that northerly wind is. It will depend on whether we see really cold air or just moderately cold air. It does look like we'll go colder than average, just whether it's sort of potent minus 8, minus 10 degrees to 850 HPA or just sort of minus 3 to minus 5. It can make a big difference for snow further southwards or wintriness further southwards, but it definitely does look over the north we will be seeing sort of a return to wintry showers at least. Now, beyond that, if we do run out to day 10, this is where we have very, very interesting things starting to appear. 16, have high pressure over the top of the UK, amplified jet streams, so you can just see dips and troughs in the low pressure, uh, in the jet stream. So it would be a bit of a mild sector actually going through there with high pressure centered over the UK. See so a little bit of lack of lower pressure towards the north, potentially a bit of blocking. You see 15, have high pressure over the top of the UK, extending towards Scandinavia. Not a massive blocking system there, um, but again, could be starting to show uh, that amplification coming off. Another 11, just have a flat westerly wind, probably quite actually quite mild coming in from the west. Another 9, or 17.6%, have a proper high pressure block developing towards Scandinavia, and that would start to go really quite cold in from the east. Now, you'd say only has 9, or 17.6% support at day 10, but as we'll run through, that pattern gains support through February. Now, if we do run out to 300 hours, you can see 27 or 52.9% have this westerly pattern, a bit of an amplified jet stream, so milder and colder sectors. 24 or 47.1%, so near 50-50 split, slightly in favour of the westerly flow, but almost 50% are going for high pressure towards Scandinavia, bitterly cold easterly winds, and that would be causing cold weather for early February. Could be a similar pattern to what we saw last year, uh, through the first 10 days of February where we saw bitterly cold easterly winds. Didn't see as much snowfall as, as we'd hoped with that easterly wind, but we did see quite a few snow showers, and we did, of course, see Storm Darcy in the southeast. So could we be seeing a bit of a repeat here? No guarantees, of course, but there definitely is quite a lot of weight in this potential Scandinavian high. And if we go right up to 300 uh, and 60 hours again you can see the scandinavian high pattern with easterly winds with that center of the high over scandinavia pulling in an easterly flow whether it's bitterly cold or not um coming in from the east it's going to be cold enough for snow whether it's freezer 
light temperatures where temperatures not getting above freezing widely or whether it's just generally temperatures down to one or two degrees one two three degrees with snowfall it's difficult to say uh without seeing exact air masses but anything from the east this time of year is going to be really quite cold uh, but you can see 27 or 52.9 percent still will go for that westerly scenario so as i said not guaranteed uh this scenario still would produce colder polar maritime, mar maritime air masses um as uh, there is still a bit of blocking around but just not getting that blocking going towards scandinavia so very very interesting pattern from both uh from these models today um definitely putting more weight in this scandinavian high um from the latest runs now if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see this well reflected, it's pretty mild over the next sort of three or four days before we see that colder dip towards the weekend, uh, towards the last couple of days of January, start of February, some going much colder, again those going for more of a sharp northerly wind, others going a bit milder including the operational GFS run, staying around average or slightly below average, then we all see return to above average, so we a bit of a milder sector come through, but it's really around the 4th or 5th of February where the big uncertainty comes in, you can see really cold runs starting to appear, potentially a quarter to a third of the ensemble runs, uh, including the operation run which we saw went really quite cold with a bit of a Scandinavian high, not a raw sort of beat from the East Scandinavian high, but cold enough uh, or blocked enough to give colder weather. Um, so you can see about a third or a quarter are going really quite cold, getting down to minus 5 to minus 10, even some colder than that. Others staying around average or slightly above average. Again, all depends on whether we see that block towards Scandinavia. So not guaranteed, but definitely is uh, sort of a decent chance at this stage. And it's increasing. Definitely more weight in it today than there was yesterday. So that is a good sign if you're looking for colder weather. Again, looking at sea level pressure for London, generally higher than average pressure um so not not a lot of really unsettled weather there will be cloud there will be wind there will be rain but it's not looking like an absolute washout in the south potentially though further northwards we can be seeing a lot more um, unsettled conditions and you see for glasgow much more unsettled in terms of uh lower pressure you see that um average lines getting down to 1015 1010 millibars so edging on lower pressure with a lot coming much lower pressure oscillating between low and high pressure definitely in the shorter term so interesting to see that and again if we have a look at the new snow depth spikes for glasgow you can see snow that's potentially um there's some snow coming potentially for the end of january start of february and then of course increased chance through february and for london minimal chances for the end of the end uh, end of the month start of february but then returns potentially towards the first third of february and again we'll have to keep an eye really on what happens to that and again Two, two meter dew points give really good idea. You can see really cold dew points potentially throughout the first 10 days of February. Those will be the easterly flows. Others staying much milder will be more of an Atlantic flow. Again, favoring uh, Atlantic flow uh, from a lot of the ensemble members at this stage. But as I said, about a, a quarter to a third are going for that really cold scenario of an, east, or of an easterly winds. But definitely does look like the east and blue F ensembles are very much going for more of a Scandinavian high in the longer term than perhaps the GFS ensembles. But it's difficult to say because the GFS ensembles just show temperature. Um, and of course, look at that East MWF operation line at day 10. Although it's about to go into a bitterly cold easterly wind, it's actually quite mild at the surface because we are still seeing that high pressure build. So some of these ensemble runs could be deceiving. Some of these could be showing milder conditions. And you run it on another couple of days, it could go very, very cold. So again, General patterns, though, definitely looking like easterly winds could be coming off towards the end of uh, or the start of February. So we'll have to see with that. Now, if we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office five-day precipitation and temperature, increased chance of cloud and rain and milder uh, conditions actually over the next couple uh, of days. Now today we saw a few showers in the north, but generally just quite cloudy really. Through Wednesday, increased showers in the north um, and persistent rain through the evening, spreading southwards but sort of degrading away through the early hours of Thursday. A bit of wintriness potentially over the northern hills with colder air um, and showers pushing into the north. And then we see thicker cloud building for Friday. Heavy rain pushing in the north, but in the south, nothing too crazy. So maybe some drizzle and some lighter rain at times before Sunday. Again, rain across Ireland. Just a lot of cloud, though. Now, today, temperatures were really quite cold across the north and parts of the Midlands, down to minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 degrees, where we saw cloud breaking. But this afternoon, it's been really chilly, 2 to 4 degrees, really quite a cold day today, quite widely. In the west, though, 8 or 9 degrees with a bit more mixing there. Through tonight, we're going to see a frost in a few spots again. Again, it all depends on cloud amounts. This forecast, or this model may be showing 2, 3 degrees where you are, but it could be below that. It could be minus 1, minus 2 if we do see the cloud break. Um, and through Wednesday afternoon, once again, 
chilly day, six, seven, eight degrees, but nowhere near as cold as today. And yesterday has been through Thursday, um, early morning, potentially a bit of frost in the south, but nothing too crazy. In the afternoon, warmest temperatures actually in the south, 10 to 12 degrees further northwards, more around four or five degrees, uh, maybe towards freezing across Scottish Highlands. Friday, overnight, it's going to be again pretty chilly into Friday morning, uh, Friday in the day, again, average six to eight degrees. Uh, and then by Saturday, mild temperatures coming through overnight, 10, 11 degrees, but by Sunday, areas returning back to a colder air mass. So you can see oscillating between colder and milder sector over the next five days will be a few frosts around, potentially some colder days, but there'll also be plenty of milder days. But unfortunately, it does look like there will be a lot of thick cloud around, quite a lot of drizzle and showers and increased chance of stronger winds, especially further northwards and westwards. Big change, though, from what we've had recently with a lot of mundane high pressure. Definitely more stuff happening over the next five days. And, of course, as we head towards the end of January, start of February, there becomes the opportunities once again to be maybe seeing proper cold spell. It'd be very, very unlikely if we don't see a proper cold spell over the next four to six weeks. Um, most winters have a colder spell at some point, whether it happens in December or whether it happens in February, March time, most winters have bitterly cold spells and winters that don't have it will be something like uh, 2019, 2020 winter where we had very strong polar vortex coupling up with the surface. We do have a very strong polar vortex this year, but it hasn't coupled up with the surface um, uh, winds. So there is a very high chance we see a colder spell, a proper cold spell, at least three to five days of colder weather with snow potentially widely or opportunities for snow widely. Um, and that could be coming up over the next four to six weeks. We really do need to keep eyes peeled for that. Of course, opportunities with the Scandinavian high. And of course, I'll keep you updated here. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. So if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.